Hello everyone, Steve here back with RetroTech and I've got another monitor ready to, uh, for us to take a closer look at and today we will be taking a look at the 54Q series. So this series came out in about 1995 and it was a huge revolutionary step for the PVMs line of uh, Sony's monitors. This particular monitor was the first to introduce the service menu. Well, this line of monitors. So you've got the 54Q, which is, this is the 19 inch, 1954Q. This one is from 1995. And this one had a, uh, a medical unit brother almost, and that's the 1953 MD. Now, if you're in other countries, it might be 2053. And, uh, but that was the medical version of this monitor. So this was, kind of a representation of a PVM that was made for other uses besides medical. So they separated the medical unit and then they had this unit for maybe video editing or um, some other type of work that didn't involve medical equipment specifically. So again, this one had the very first example of the on-screen service menu with the uh, geometry settings. You can you know adjust on screen in front of the screen rather than turning potentiometers in the back of the monitor. So let's just go ahead and get right into this thing. I want to show you some of the specific features as well as what this particular unit did differently. So first we're going to go ahead and take a look behind the monitor and see some of the hardware. Shielding and you've got your power supply board over here now on the left and then all the regular yoke settings. But let's take a look down here specifically at the deflection board. So we've got our flyback here, and this is still an issue overall. So there's the bottom one. If you turn it up, it'll actually make your screen kind of blow out and uh, really bright white. And you might even see some lines show up uh, or vice versa. If it's too low, it'll just go black. So if you're seeing something on your screen and it's not working, sometimes you actually need to make an adjustment on there. But the problem is here, it's very hard to access back here. You don't have a lot of clearance. I'd probably say less than uh, um, two inches. So the one on top of that is your focus. There is one more potentiometer that's behind my uh, colored cables right here. That's this one. And this, you can't see it right from this angle, so let's lean forward a little bit. This potentiometer. This will again, uh, that will adjust your screen center. Horizontal, you know, what was going on inside there. And so if you have where your yoke is really loose then most likely this screw right here has become loose and just needs to be tightened up so just be very gentle tightening that you can even loosen it a little bit first and then if you loosen it it actually loosens up your yoke and makes it easier to turn to make your adjustment so uh, just wanted to show that that's pretty much standard on all these monitors you do want to try to keep these convergence rings in place because they were set originally professionally and it, that is one of the hardest things to adjust on a monitor is convergence, I feel. So down here, talking about convergence, we're going to go and look at the neck board closer. And you'll see another potentiometer right here. And this is going to control our overall screen convergence. So if you have colors that are separating all across your screen, you can turn that convergence potentiometer and it'll line it up. Those are the only potentiometers that are going to be in this monitor anymore. And everything else has been moved to the on-screen menu. Just a quick run through on the back here. This, this is something that should be noted if you're looking at this particular monitor. For some reason on this one they've got three standard lines where it's A, B, and C. Uh, C has the S video. The other two are just standard composites. And then you've got one RGB slash component input. So this, this will use RGB or component. It'll allow it, it's switchable on the front, but you can't use both simultaneously because you have to either come up with a solution to change the signal and then change the setting on the monitor, which is doable. Now please note, it's just got one input here. Some of the 1953s actually have two inputs uh, for RGB and component, which is really nice. Which would have been um, had a different button setup. This is this is also the first time you're going to see these particular knobs added to the uh, 
the CRT, and the monitor. So first let's take a look at our button setup down here. We've obviously got our power button, which goes in and out like any other, and if we get a power signal, we get an LED indicator there. Now if you see this remote, if it says an orange light shows up here, then there's a setting where it's on remote settings, and you just want to try to turn that remote setting off. That just means that it's someone at the past was using it in remote sequence with other monitors and maybe had a remote control unit controlling a lot of the adjustments from somewhere else. Uh, first we've got our volume knob and we've got a contrast knob and a phase, a chroma, uh, brightness and aperture. So just to note settings such as S-Video and even component then you'll be able to use chroma and then um, phase and aperture are really more for composite signals trying to clear them up uh, so they might not do anything on some of the other buttons and talk about them. So you see obviously up top it says line A, line B, and line C. And then under that it says RGB, component, SDI, line slash RGB, and X sync. So if you just saw what I did, so example, whatever is lit up is the line you are on. So if that's the only one lit up, that's the A line, that's the B line, that's the C line. There is no SDI card installed in this monitor, but from the manual it says there was an option to add that. So that's not going to be very common. I've never seen one come with the SDI, but uh, that is what that means. So most of the time you're going to ignore that one. But for example, to get it in RGB, you have to first have it on A, and then you have to go down here and you have to put... See what it says line slash whatever, RGB for example? That means you have to push that RGB to turn on RGB and then you need to, if you need to uh, use the sync, you'll have to have that pushed in too. So this example is a setup for RGB. If I was using component instead, I could use the same setup for that. If I did not need sync for example, then I could turn the sync off and I could use my component and my line button and that would be the only one pressed in. So just keep that in mind. That's how you use your setup for your inputs. The uh, bottom down here has our degauss button, which is just a standard degauss. Then there's some other calibration tool uh, settings. So you've got a blue only, which if you press it will only uh, let you see blues, which kind of shows up as just grays. And that helps for grayscale calibration of colors. Uh, we've got an underscan mode that allows you to go to an underscan size on your screen. And then, so if you're not, if you're seeing something and your screen looks small, check and make sure that's not turned on. We've also got an HV delay, which is kind of for if you want to separate uh, your sinks and you need some kind of sink. I don't really use that normally, but that is what that does. And then you've got a 16 by 9 feature, which like I said, this was for use in uh, video production more. So this is a 16 by 9 photo. It'll actually squeeze your picture down which is pretty useless, but that's the way it goes. And then you're going to insert, enter the menus here by using this menu button. Let's back out and take a look at the screen. We'll still go ahead and go through the patterns for you of how to do it. We're going to go back to our test grid and we'll start from here. So I will kind of turn off or try to turn off the inputs if I can so you can see the menu better. But again, we'll press menu. On here, we can set up our chroma, but we don't have to do that. That's done with a light probe, I believe. And then everything else, it, the user configure, that's where you might turn on your remote settings. Uh, but, and you can do some other smaller controls. But the, uh, this one is pretty important. So we talked about in the past adjusting your color temperatures. If you want to adjust your gains and your biases, so your gains are going to be like your color uh, intensities. And then your bias might be the grayscale of each color. So the gain, you know, if you, if you need to do a little color adjustment, you can go in there. But this is the actual color temperatures. Again, we've got the 6,593 that's in nearly all the other monitors. Uh, I have it on the 93 because that's my favorite. And uh, same way as the other uh, menu, to get into the sub-menu, we're going to press degauss and enter at the same time while we have that up. And let's go through our settings again. This is, so if we go up and down, we press menu to go up, we press enter to go down, 
And let's go, I'm sorry, menu to go down. So it's the opposite of that. Menu, press that to go down and enter to go up. And we're going to start here and look at our settings. The first, let's just concentrate only on the first 17 settings because those are, only, those are the only ones that are going to be of most importance here for 95% of the time uh, making adjustments on your monitor. The first one for me, I'm using 60 uh, hertz frequency, so uh, I don't need the 50. I need to get to the first 60, which is my horizontal frequency, and that's my centerness. That is the center horizontal adjustment on my screen. So if I press up, I increase that value and my screen goes that way. If I press down, my screen value goes that way. And if you notice here while you're moving this, you'll see, let me show you, an arrow block that will point to whatever setting is set in the menu right now. So if you need to make a one-time adjustment for a single game, you can do that and then press the uh, input your on button again it'll take the menu away and you can just use it temporarily and you can turn the monitor off right now or you can press degauss and it will actually send it back to whatever setting is stored inside the menu if you're making a permanent i'm sorry if you're making a permanent setting on here then to write that setting you're going to hit the enter button when you've made your adjustment you hit the enter button I'm sorry, not enter. You hit the Gauss. You hit the D Gauss button. You'll see it display right on the screen. And if you hit it again, you'll see a star show up next to your number right here, right above the right. You, so you hit that twice quickly. It writes that into memory. And that's how you make an adjustment and keep it. Then you can go up from there and you can go to the next setting, which is video phase which is a little bit, it's just the same thing as horizontal frequency. You have a lot of control over your horizontal centeredness on these monitors so you can get it dialed in correctly. And same thing, to write it and change it, it's all through up and down arrows and degauss twice to write your value. And if you don't like a setting, again, I said you could get out of it and hit degauss and it'll go back, or just turn it off and turn it right back on and it'll go back to the original settings, pull your menu back up and start working again. Number six starts our vertical size on there, and then our vertical center is next. So you can see that move down the screen and up the screen. And then our next setting is the Again, horizontal size, and okay, so now we're going to get in here to our corner adjustments. First, we've got pin phase, and I'm just going to show you that's this ninth setting here. You can see what that does. That's more that um, hexagon trapezoid where we're trying to get the, uh, the screen moves this way towards it and backwards. So if there's something really crazy looking on the screen, check this to try to get it balanced out correctly. Next, we have pin amp, which is your whacked out screens in the corners where it looks like a globe or the opposite of a globe. Uh, so if you see something like this consistently at the corners, you can tell that you need to make an adjustment in your pin amp. So these were all settings that were in the previous model to this, but you had to do them through potentiometers and a screwdriver in the back of the monitor while you were trying to adjust it up front. So this one has a lower pin amp setting that allows you to do the lower curve as well as the upper pin above that, number 12. So you've got the complete control of the corners. It's not as... Uh, the L series has more settings where it can let you get in the middle. So sometimes on these monitors it's very difficult to get things in this area and this area and vice versa to get them perfect. They're always going to look a little bit wonky. Uh, I mean, just a little bit. So just keep that in mind with this because that's not something that's controllable that is controllable in later models of PVMs. 
Now we're going to get to the sexy setting, which is just a, a weird little thing that lets you control your center, whether it's not lined up for some reason or you're trying to help center the lines down uh, from the corner. And that's the sexy setting, uh, vertical linearity. So let's change to a different screen here for a second and look at these circles. Linearity, there's some monitors will have two linearity adjustments available. This one only has a single one where you can go up and down on that linearity to try to help. And you're trying to make your circles as round as possible. You don't want any ovals, but that's the goal of linearity is to try to help you get all your circles here lined up in a uh, circular setting. And then our next setting of importance is our vertical bow. And then we have a lower vertical bow and finally a vertical angle. So let's start working. We're going to need to do the rest of these settings from the other screen. Vertical bow. Let's go ahead and just show you that. That's just a lean on here where you can tell. I'm, I'm doing this from one setting to the next so you can see how it, uh, it, it shifts that screen. And that's, that's what that one controls. And... The next is lower vertical bow, so this is just working on the lower end of the screen. You can see your corners moving, so if one of them looks crazy, you can move it around that way. And the last is vertical angle, which is the angle of your access point, so you're t t turning that one way or the other on the, its axis. Uh, like if you're if you're looking this way, if your screen's looking a little crazy like that, that's what that adjustment is. So again, you have to go through and try to use those settings. That's about 12 or uh, so that you will be able to individually use for the actual geometry on your screen on this model of PVM. Um, then you'll have to use a combination of all those to try to clear it up as best as possible. And again, if you don't like the settings, turn it off and turn it back on and it'll give you back to what you were. It didn't write, you know, your, your other settings. So that's something that you need to think about on there um, while you're working. Again, this one does need a little bit of adjustment still, but for the most part, we're going to get out of this stuff. And there you go. So it's a very great monitor, 600 TV line, uh, RGB component, a lot of inputs, and it was an advancement for uh, PVMs. But that's just kind of a close look at how to get it adjusted correctly, your screen quality, everything else is pretty much standard to uh, PVMs. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and please be on the lookout for future features on single monitors as well as other CRT content. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it and have a great day.